So we have seen that a graph consists of a set of nodes connected by a set of edges. So when we draw a graph, we typically draw them as nodes like this and then we draw edges with arrows indicating what is connected to what. Now we can do one more step of information gathering by putting some labels which carry meanings on these edges. So what we are going to look at in this session is what we call an edge labeled graph. So let us go back to this trains data set. So remember that we have these train cards and we have these station cards and what we said was that we would try to represent in a graph all pairs of stations which are connected by a direct train. So for this what we said was that a direct train would connect the starting point and the ending point. We are not going to connect for example Kanpur to Churu, we are not going to call this a direct connection. We are only going to allow Kolkata to Bikaner to be a direct connection for such a train. So for each train we set up a dictionary entry where the keys is a train, train number and then there are two special fields keys start and end which indicate the starting and the ending. So in this particular train 12259 the start station is Kolkata and the end station is Bikaner. So from this dictionary then we wrote this procedure called direct routes okay, which will first compute if you remember the set of stations which are actually present as starting stations and ending stations because we do not know this in advance. This is implicitly given in the train dictionary. So we pick it up from the trains dictionary. Then we create a matrix to represent the, the graph that we are going to construct that is called direct. But for that we need to first map all our stations from names to positions 0 to n minus 1. So we did that and then we did this simple loop which just looked at every possible pair of stations. So not sorry, it looked at every possible train and picked up the index of the starting station and the ending station and created a direct ij entry for this. So this is a simple graph which takes the numbers of the stations, so 0 to n minus 1 as the nodes and draws an edge from i to j if there is a direct train from i to j. But once we have drawn this direct edge from i to j, we do not know which train it was and if there were more than one train. So what if we want to record this information, right? So we want to record more than just the fact. So we want to supposing Howrah is uh, for or Kolkata is say station 7 and maybe Bikaner is station 52, then we would just have drawn this edge from 7 to 52. But I want to say that this is actually an edge which is serviced by the train 12259. So how do I put this information into my graph? So what we can do is instead of just keeping 0, 1 as my entries in the direct matrix, I can make the entries actually dictionaries. So what I do is that initially I set each pair ij to have an empty dictionary. So this means that there is no route that I know of between station i and station j. Now whenever we discover a route, Instead of just saying that direct ij is equal to 1 as we did before, we changed a 0 to a 1, what we do is we take this dictionary that we have for that position right? and we add a key for the train that we have just discovered. So notice therefore that direct ij could have more than one train. They could be for example between Mumbai and Delhi, they could be multiple trains. So what we will end up, we will end up doing after we scan all the trains is that for every train that runs between Mumbai and Delhi. If Mumbai is i and Delhi is j, there will be a key for that train. So there will be multiple keys attached to that entry. If there is no connection between a pair of cities, then there will be no train and the dictionary will remain empty. Right? So this is what we call an edge labeled graph. So we have taken the edges between the cities and we have put some information on this edge which gives us more information than just the fact that there is a route. In this particular case, we have recorded all the trains that create this route. There could be one, there could be many. And of course, if there is no train, then we will have an empty dictionary. Right? So this notion of an edge labeled graph is a very useful thing and it is very often used in conjunction with graphs to do computations. So here is one natural computation that we might want to do with our own train data set. Supposing we need to know not just whether or not there is a train from A to B, a direct train, but also how much distance it travels. Now if you remember, this information is there on that card because there is 
a distance column here. So with this tells us, for example, on this card, that is 1916 kilometers from Kolkata to Bikaner. So in a similar way, I might want to know the distance between every pair of cities which is directly connected by a train. So this means that I would have to record that distance, first of all, in my trains dictionary. right? So I have my trains dictionary for each train T. I had a start station and end station. And now I will also keep a third key, which is the distance traveled from start to end by this train. Now I need to compute this information for every pair of stations. So I have an edge labeled graph where in the previous one I had created edge labels cre consisting of the train numbers which connect A to B. But now I want to know the distance from A to B. So this is an edge labeled graph in which the edge label is a number. right? So trains might now, the, you might ask, I mean if it is connected then surely there is only one, one distance. But if you look at the data set, actually there are for long distance trains like say for Howrah to or Calcutta to Delhi, there are some trains which go by one route and some trains which go by another route. So even though the starting station and the ending station are the same, it's possible that these trains follow different routes and travel different distances. So as we go along finding out all the trains, we might need to update this distance as we go along. So we are going to represent this in this edge label graph which I have called direct dist. Right? So the edge label direct dist is going to be a number. And direct dist ij is going to indicate the shortest direct distance between i and j among all the trains. And if there is no train, right, if i and j are not connected by a direct train, then I am going to just represent it by 0. So we assume that no pair of stations can be connected by 0 distance. So therefore, if I see a 0, there is no edge. But if I see a non-zero entry, it is not going to be just 1. It is going to be the actual distance in kilometers by the shortest route which takes me from i to j. So here is how we do this. We first create, so remember we do all that stuff to figure out uh, in the direct uh, edge case to figure out how many stations there are and how to map them and all that. So let's assume we have done all that. Right? So now we have got n which is the number of stations in our network. Right? So we create this empty matrix which has all zero entries of n by n. Then we do this index mapping so that we get an index for every station and now we are in business to compute the distances. Right? So we go through every train, we take the starting point and the ending point right? and then we see if this is the first time we have discovered this distance. Right? If it is the first time that we have discovered this distance, then we just take the current train's distance entry and copy it into direct dist ij. So you remember that if the value of the distance is 0, that means that so far these two stations are assumed to be disconnected. So the very first time I find a connection, I just take whatever distance I get and I copy it. Okay? On the other hand, if the distance is not 0, then this train connects a pair of stations which I have already found before as being connected. So there is already a distance recorded for this. So I want to find the shortest distance, so I take the current value that I have direct dist ij which is the current entry remember it is not 0 because I have come to the else part. right? So I have come to the else part which means that it is not 0 so there is some existing route for which I have computed distance. So I take that distance that I have already computed, I take the distance of the new train that I am examining now, I take the minimum of the two and replace it back into direct ij. Right? So this is a standard minimum calculation we have done it for marks everything. When I see a new mark I keep a minimum that I have got so far. If the new mark is smaller than the minimum I have got so far, I replace the minimum with the new mark. Right? This is exactly the same thing except we now we are doing it in a graph format. So for each ij which is flagged by the correct current train, I replace its distance by the minimum of the current distance that I already knew and the distance of the train that I am looking at. So we can do this for direct distances which we just did. We can also do this because we just took the trains dictionary and directly computed the one uh, one edge distance you know without changing trains. Now of course I can do this for hops as well. right? So we start with this matrix of direct distances that we have already computed in the previous procedure. And now as before we will say that okay if I want to go with at most one hop then if I can go directly then that is my minimum distance. If I cannot go at all it will be 0. So I initialize the one hop distance from i to j to be the same as the direct distance from i to j. Then after that, 
we do our usual thing, right? We check if there is an intermediate k. Now remember that in this graph, the value is not 0, 1. The value is 0 or not 0. So if there is an intermediate k for which the distance is bigger than 0 from i and from k to j is also bigger than 0, that means that I have a direct train from i to k and a direct train from k to j and not only that, these two distances are the shortest distances that I know of between i and k and k to j respectively. Right? So if I now go from i to j via k, then the new distance will be the sum of these two distances because I have to go from i to k and then add the distance from k to j. So I will call this a new distance. So I have discovered a new route from i to j. As before, now what I need to do is to check whether this needs to be updated or not. Right? So if the distance that I already have is not 0, then I will take the minimum of the distance I already have and the new distance I have computed. If it is 0, I will just update this to be the new distance. Right? So this is exactly the same thing that we did before except that we started off by starting with the direct distance and initializing one hop distance to be that and then for every uh, k that we see intermediate station. So exactly remember we did this one hop connectivity, right? So we said for every k, if I can go from i to k and k to j, then I will go from i to j. So here because we have to compute the distance, for every k we will say, let me take the distance from i to k, the distance from k to j and then take the minimum of that new sum and the sum that I already know. And if I do not have it, then I will add a new entry. So you can imagine now that now I can take the one hop distance, right? And the direct distance and I can get the two hop distance, right? I can take the minimum of the one hop plus the direct then I can take the minimum of a 2 hop of the direct. So just as we did this transitive closure to find out the pairs of vertices which are connected by longer and longer paths, I can find out the distance between the trains which are connected by longer and longer paths. So the transitive closure calculation that we did for just the 0, 1 case, either there is a path or there is no path, we can replace it by this more elaborate minimum calculation to compute the shortest distance along any of these paths. So to summarize, what we have done is shown that by keeping extra information as labels on the edges, we can make our graph contain more useful data. So in the first case, we said that we could record for every train which connects, every pair of stations connected by a train, not just the fact that there is a direct connection, but also label it with every train which actually serves this pair of cities. Then we said that you can also take this distance and now record the minimum distance between a pair of cities and then iterate it, right? So instead of just keeping 0, 1, we keep a number and iteratively we can keep updating this number to get the minimum direct edge and then by doing this transitive closure calculation, we can keep the minimum of all the paths that we discover by doing this transitive closure and in the process, we will find the shortest path connecting any two pair of, any pair of cities which are actually connected in the train network.